All right, so here's an image of mediocre quality at this point, but it's, it's one that it will be easy to, to, to talk about. Um, okay, let's get my screens here. So here's my background layer. And really, it's got a very flat feeling to it because the colors are all equal intensity. Um, what drew my eye was actually what always draws my eye, which is white bark on a tree, so birch and aspen trees, uh, autumn colors. And uh, this isn't the, the file that I have worked on, uh, but it's one that'll work for today. So what we wanna do is I wanna talk about dodge and burn technique. And I'm gonna just pick one technique at, at a time. The easiest technique is to do what's called a soft light or an overlay dodge burn layer. I'm gonna create a uh, new layer and I'm gonna change the mode to, I like soft light, that's just a little more, um, it's, it's a little more refined and not as harsh as the overlay. Um, and so I tend to use that. The key is we want to fill this with a soft light uh, neutral color, 50% gray. So we check that box right there. And so what we have is this layer that is essentially a gray layer. What this what Photoshop is doing with the soft light, this is what we call a blend mode. And what the blend mode does is it tells the computer how to calculate the change of the pixels below it. And what's really important when working with color images in particular is the fact that if we use the, the traditional dodge burn tool on a color image, what ends up happening is we actually lose color saturation, it just, it goes kind of muddy, okay? Uh, and so, in this case, actually I'm, I'm burning on the layer, so I'm not doing the effect. Let me undo that. Um, now, here's the cool thing about dodge burn layers. I can't screw up my image. I can always fill that layer up with 50% gray and start over, okay? So I was on the wrong layer to show what I was talking about. With the burn and dodge tool, if I were to work on it directly, which I would never do, by the way, when doing your dodge burn, make sure you work on a duplicate background layer so that you can always go back to your before and after and see a difference. So the traditional dodge burn technique is to use the dodge burn tool. And up here, you do have some nice choices here in that you can choose which range of values you want to burn in. You can choose your exposure uh, as well, okay? I'm gonna make this really uh, aggressive burn on here, and I'm going to uh, do midtones, and I'm just gonna burn that. And what I want you to notice, if I zoom in on here, is how gray it looks. I'm not burning in color, okay? Dodge burn tool is something that I'll use on a monochrome image. I won't use it on a color. But the technique I want to show you today is one that works equally well for both. And that's why I really like this technique. So we're playing with a color image just because I want, want to show you a couple of things uh, here. So I've got my soft light layer and I can paint with black to burn in. And so I can go to my brush tool and I can set my opacity. And this is where we're gonna talk a little bit later about, I like to set up some brush presets. And so I generally will start out probably at a 25% with the idea that I have to click that mouse four times to be 100%. And keeping in mind in photography, when we talk about f-stops, we're typically doubling or having the exposure. Now, Photoshop isn't exactly the same way in terms of logarithmic scale of, of image tones, but you can see when I paint in here, I'm on the wrong layer, there we go. When I paint in here, it is keeping that color saturation. See how I, I'm getting darker, but I'm getting more color. That's the difference between using the soft light or overlay dodge burn layer. And in fact, I like to name this layer dodge burn layer, okay? And so I'm gonna wipe that clean by filling it with 50% gray and start over. So now what I'm looking at is how can I 
bring a little more out of this image to create a little more separation between that white trunk and what's going on in the foreground. Because, and I can adjust my brushes by hitting my left and right bracket keys. And I'm, I always use a soft 0% uh, hardness for uh, most dodge burn techniques, okay? I only use hard edge brushes most of the time when I'm doing layer masking for compositing, cutting out things. Uh, but here, I'm just gonna go ahead and move that in. And so I like to, you know, be able to build that up. Okay. So there's before, there's after. Do I have a little more depth? All right. That's what I'm going for with my dodge burn is I'm tra trying to create a little uh, foreground, background. I'm trying to create a little contrast that gives the, uh, gives. in this case, it really comes off as a painterly effect, doesn't it? Okay. So now let's do it. This is burning, by the way. Let's look at our mask right now. That's my mask. Everything that's darker than middle gray has gotten darker on the image below. Everything that's middle gray has stayed the same. So now anything I paint with white, so I'm going to use X on my keyboard. Using the letter X will toggle between the foreground and background color. So I want to paint with white on here. And I'm going to just come in and brighten up this. And I'll zoom in a little bit so I can see this a little bit more. And I can come in and open that up along that trunk. Now I need a little smaller brush because I don't want to contaminate and brighten up everything. You can see how bright that one is. So I have, you know, a, a good ways to go on some of these if I want to have a similar brightness value. And, and the concept I'm paying attention to here is this idea that light values draw our attention, dark <coughs> values recede. And so by controlling the highlights of my image, I'm controlling the emphasis. There's the before and the after. Okay. Now, one thing I'm going to do at this point, uh, I'm probably going to go back to burning in one area here just a little bit more. Just right up in there. Just anywhere I just see some flatness. I'm going to just pull that out a little bit. Okay. So that's looking pretty interesting to me, I think. Uh, the extra step I'll go to is at this point, as I'm editing, in Photoshop, I want to be as non-destructive as possible. So I have my original image, I have my dodge burn, but now I want to do something. I want to apply a filter effect or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy merge. And what that's going to do is it's going to, uh, in effect, flatten my image into a single layer that when I hit edit and paste, I now have a flattened version of my image that I can now do more work. And this is a way for me to create kind of chapters where I've start and stop my work and I go, okay, I was happy with it up till this point. Now I'm gonna copy merge, paste it in here. And now what I typically will do uh, these days is I will go into my camera raw filter. And one of the things I like to do is a little bit of vignetting just to pull that eye in to the scene. A little bit more see how that eye your eyes are drawn out to the frame to the edge of the frame and here I'm actually just pulling that eye back into this area of richness does that make sense okay what I could also do at this point is I could typically you know play just a little bit on an image that this was taken in low contrast light. This is a cloudy day uh, a couple of years ago and uh, actually longer than that. It's been probably four years ago. Uh, it was an older camera that wasn't very high resolution. In fact, this one might have been my cell phone. Okay, uh, So I can come in here and add a little bit of clarity 
to add a little mid-tone contrast to the image. And I can undo that. There's before, there's after, okay? And I'm not happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back off, undo, I'm gonna duplicate my layer, and here's what I'm gonna do. This is another concept I want you to write down. And that is I'm going to apply that effect that was a little too much, and when I go back to a filter, the first filter is the last one I used, and it saves all the settings. So I can just hit camera off filter right here instead of going down here, and it's gonna apply that, that clarity setting that I applied. And now I can see before, after. And this is the part that I really, I want you to break your image and then back off. I want you to really explore the maximum edges of, of creativity with your image by breaking those tones apart. But then what I want you to do is when you realize by looking before and after that I've gone too far, I've lost the soft emotional quality of this, that I can lower the opacity of this effect. So now it's more subtle. And now I go, you know what, that holds what I wanted. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so we have talked about a dodge burn layer, and we've talked about uh, using the copy merge and pasting at certain stopping points where we can always work our way back to. Okay, so we just looked at a dodge burn layer where we were able to paint a custom dodge burn. I'm gonna show you another technique that I think is pretty amazing, and that is to use an entire layer as a dodge burn of image information. And what I mean by that is I am going to create a duplicate layer and I'm gonna call this my burn layer because it's pretty obvious that, that sky would look better with a little more richness in there. So what I'm gonna do on this burn layer is I am going to go to, uh, we're gonna use two blend modes for dodge and burn. First one is going to be multiply mode and look how that just really made that sky beautiful, didn't that? But it caused the shadows to go too dark, okay? So now I have two options here of how to work with this. One option is to add a layer mask, and I can hit reveal all or hide all. And the way I choose whether to reveal all or hide all is I look at my image and go, okay, how much do I need to dodge versus how much would I need to show in this case? I actually like the sky and I like the water. I don't like the foreground and I don't like the, the shadow in there. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and go reveal all and just uh, use the layer mask to paint black and hide it in the areas that I wanna keep. And this is where I start, you know, conjuring Bob Ross and I'm painting my happy trees with a layer mask and my bushes in the foreground. Happy trees, happy bushes. Okay, but now the challenge is, is how do I pull that out without creating a halo effect? Like if I do that, you, you pay attention to that halo effect. So I'm gonna pull out my history palette, by the way. And my history palette will allow me to back up a few brush strokes to where I'm okay with where I'm at, okay? So this would be a very quick way of doing this. Uh, but then there's another technique that I can add to this. And what I'm gonna do is on this layer, on our layer menu, we have this menu palette right here. And I'm going to look for uh, one that says blending options. Okay, and this is pretty, pretty neat here, is in blending options, I can control how much of that layer shows through. You see how it's changing the effect, so if I go all the way out, I'm losing it. So now, it's not perfect, but, but it's not very perfect in, in this area here. 
Well, guess what? I can come back into my layer mask and put my opacity up and get the original info. So look how much easier it is for me to create a really good mask that eliminates that posterization and yet I am keeping so much more detail And I got some areas in here that um, I might just go to a 50%. Okay. What about that number of flashlights? It's like there's a weird stuff in there. That's the stuff in the muck. I mean, that's a mucky pond. Oh. Right, and in fact, I might have a little duck or coot uh, in the water there or something. I don't know. It's, again, it's an older camera, so it wasn't the, the greatest image to work with. Like zoom in, zoom in on the tree uh, the reflection. Oh yeah, so we can clean that up right there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you do need to go in and clean that up, and I actually kind of like having that stand out a little bit more. But what I'm doing is I would never get that sky to come in as accurately painted without using this multiply technique, okay? So that's another technique that we have available to us. Let me pull up another image for the heck of it. And we're gonna find an image with some dark shadows. So this is kind of fun to do intentionally, by the way. And in fact, this is an old uh, darkroom technique of making a dark print and then bleaching it back out to create a little more contrast. So in this case, I'm going to go to a duplicate layer and I'm gonna use a screen mode. And the screen mode is going to lighten everything proportionally, okay? And again, I have the ability to lower the opacity a little bit. And I can combine that with a, uh, another dodge burn layer as well. So I'll just create a new layer. And I'll go to soft light, fill with middle gray. And I'm gonna bring out that leaf a little bit. Okay. And then that's too bright because you, you know when you've gone too far, when you get kind of this soft glow, it's, it just is a little losing some texture there. Okay. And then I'm like, okay, that's a good starting point. Now I'm gonna copy merge and I'll paste it, voila. And now I can come into my image and go into my camera raw filter and I can work on adding a little bit of clarity, not too much. And I can play with the dehaze a little bit. See how that dehaze knocks the shadows down a little bit? And then I can pull my whites up a little bit. And maybe even pull my highlights up a little bit. And so this is a case where I intentionally underexposed my image because I wanted to pull, make it a little more dramatic. Okay. And then this is one time in monochrome where I will use a dodge tool. Uh, as, and I'll create a duplicate layer so I can always undo it because I might want to just pull out a little bit of value on these pine needles. See how that's just opening those up a little bit? It's leaving the shadows alone. It's not touching the shadows. And I can look at before, after. 
See the difference? So we just covered using two different layer blend modes of multiply to burn and uh, screen to lighten. And we combined it with blending options and we combined it with layer masking to control our tone range of our images. Okay, so that's, that's a lot of techniques for you to, to play with, right? 